Okay. Show me. Hi there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the Dutch Sea Channel for another car this time. Yes, sir, I got a new car in. It is the Optimus Prime. Wait a minute, Optimus Prime, Optimus XL. Um, well, actually, the car is kind of in Optimus Prime colors. <laughs> um, nevertheless, Optimus XL from DHK Hobby. Um, I got this one from uh, Banggood, and to be perfectly honest, I had not heard of this uh, DHK brand before. The car looks interesting though, so that's why I ordered it. It is a 1.8 scale brushless 4x4 buggy. A racing style of uh, buggy. Now that doesn't mean you could take this out to the track and uh, race it. Well, you could. But I don't, I'm not saying that uh, it, it would perform up to par with other real racing buggies. So in uh, this here uh, video I'll uh, give you my impressions of the car, show you what it uh, looks like, give you its details and we'll try to answer the question if this is a basher or maybe a racer with a few uh, little tweaks, tires maybe. So yeah, that's what I'm interested in. Uh, is it uh, <coughs> an interesting car first and foremost, or is it a racer, or is it a basher? Oh, and uh, this is a hint over here. And let's see, does the box have any specs on it? Yes, it does. There are the specs. Uh, you can obviously pause the video if you want a closer look at the specs. Um, 100 amp uh, speed controller, it runs on uh, 4S, two, two 2S uh, LiPos and the uh, rest is pretty typical for a 1.8 skill buggy I think. So enough about the box, let's see what this car looks like. So let's uh, first take a, a quick look at what comes with this uh, buggy. As mentioned before, the car comes with uh, two 2S two LiPos, 3200 milliampere hour, and they are 30C LiPos. Now the specs on the Banggood side say 20C, I think. The LiPos themselves say 30C. They are pretty light though. Um, I'm not sure, maybe I'm just used to uh, higher C lipos, That's, that could be. And of course we'll see what the runtime with these stock lipos will be. Okay, and you get a charger, a balance port charger, yeah, uh, and a uh, charging lead for it of course. Um, we'll get you started, but not in a very comfortable way I'd say. Uh, two reasonably big lipos, balance port charging, meh. Yeah, uh, again, this will work, but if you don't want to set yourself up for uh, disappointment or uh, annoyment, I'd uh, suggest picking up a real hobby grade kind of charger. Doesn't uh, have to be the most expensive one. In fact, I'll uh, put a link up uh, for uh, some. Uh, IMAX, I think, charger. Something uh, basic but uh, far better than this. Will make you a lot happier. Oh, and by the way, these LiPos have a Dean's connector on them, apart from their balancing lead, of course. So, Dean's. Well, that's actually, for me, that's pretty nice. All my cars are still on Dean's connectors, so yeah, cool stuff. The car comes with this here radio transmitter trigger style of a transmitter and it's actually a pretty comfortable transmitter. It is a bit big in the hands by the way, uh, so maybe for smaller hands, yeah, I have pretty big hands. So for me it is very comfortable and the uh, wheel, huh, pretty good, has some uh, rubber padding on it. Um, the radio takes uh, four double A's that you have supp to supply yourself. And at the back of the radio you have uh, two reversing knobs, one for the throttle and one for the steering, an on-off switch 
and four other controls uh, which uh, always makes me happy because that means the car has throttle dual rates so um, with this knob over here on the top right if you turn that counterclockwise the car will run slower which is uh, a nice feature to have, I think uh, all radios should have a throttle dual rates. This way you could uh, give the car, car to a uh, younger kid and it'll be uh, quite a bit uh, slower and more safe. So that's pretty nice. And apart from that, uh, steering double rates, uh, steering trim and throttle trim. Which are of course mandatory. Uh, oh, and an on-off switch. Oh, the radio has another nice feature. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see that. It has three LEDs, one power LED, one low power and a full power. So you can actually see if the batteries in your transmitter are getting low on juice. Nice feature. Yes. The car comes with a uh, manual, user instruction manual. And it is in English. And it's actually in proper English. Very nice. Yes, um, it has exploded views of uh, the entire car and parts of the car. As you can probably see. Uh, very well illustrated this. And uh, you got uh, your spare parts listing. With pictures even. Very nice. Um, yeah, quite a good uh, manual this. Very nice. It also comes with a instructions manual for the radio. Um, not really needed, I think, but it's nice to have. And an instructions manual for the speed controller in the car. How to uh, calibrate the ESC for your radio and stuff. Very nice. I'm glad to have a manual for the ESC. All cars should come with one. And the last extra part in the box is an antenna tube. Now, um, now that I'm mentioning that, there are no tools with the car. For most RC enthusiasts uh, that won't be a problem, but if this is your first car, um, might be nice to uh, add a wheel wrench to your order. In fact, I'll uh, put a link up uh, in the description of this video for a wheel wrench won't, won't cost uh, more than a few dollars I think. And here is our buggy itself the Optimus XL Luxon buddy standard fare for a buggy in this size of course and uh, yeah t actually tell me what you think it has a rather unique looking uh, shell for a uh, racing buggy I think. Um, yeah that, that's nice I like that. Uh, it has uh, the stickering or decals I have already been applied and uh, obviously you can't take them off if you don't like them. Um, it has a big old white spoiler, might be a bit hard to see against the white backdrop but uh, yeah, a uh, normal style of uh, wing for a buggy like this. And actually this is the only part you uh, that requires assembly on this car, you have to slot it on and it's, it's secured in place by these two body clips as you can see. So no tools required there. And the body itself is also held on with two body clips. We'll take a look at the inners in a minute. Um, I do appreciate the shell having see-through windows. Yeah I know there's no real interior in the car but I do always appreciate that level of uh, realness. I never really liked the looks of uh, blinded windows on my RC. So yeah, a personal thing maybe, but uh, it is what it is. Okay, um, let's see the tires. The tires, uh, knobby style of uh, tires. Um, pretty standard on a racing buggy I think. Uh, the compound of the tires is pretty hard. As you can see it does have uh, a good amount of flex uh, to it but uh, it's harder than uh, what you'd uh, use on a uh, real race. Um, that would make them durable as well I think. So uh, that's <laughs> basically the second hint. Yeah, um, let me come right out. It, I think this is a, a setup 
to be a basher this car which is fine most people uh, use uh, RC cars for bashing and obviously you can change the tires out for some softer compound if you really want to take it out on a track um, the tires do have uh, foam inserts in them uh, of course and uh, disc wheels um, I always like uh, spoke wheels but disc wheels keep dirt out of the bearing so that's that's nice and um, yeah aluminium uh, shock tower front and back as you can see nicely orange annotation uh, on them and they are pretty thick actually yeah thicker than I had expected about three millimeters huh quite nice and let's have a look at the front suspension all right our front suspension um, plastic uh, A-arms at the bottom as you can see and the plastic feels quite good actually not too brittle not too uh, hard huh, pretty nice at the top you've got uh, swing arms that are adjustable over here I, uh, I hope you can see that and you've got an uh, anti-torque roll bar over here standard very nice uh, you've got uh, aluminium no, metal metal axles dog bones for your front wheel drive and aluminium as you can see also nicely orange annotation on them uh, shocks big bore shocks and 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 uh, there is shock oil in them for sure it is a yeah the shock oil uh, does feel a little light um, of course we'll see how this works out but feels a little light lighter than 0.5 or 50 whatever system is used but uh, yeah they do feel a little light okay the shocks can be uh, adjusted as you can see uh, preload uh, rings they have and they can be mounted at the bottom in two spots at two spots at the top you actually have six mounting uh, spots for the shocks so that's a nice amount of adjustment um, the car can be fitted out with droop screws uh, does it already have drops drop screws yes actually mine already has droop screws so you can adjust the right height if you'd want to if you run a very smooth track you'll want to adjust the right height a little but uh, other than that so far so good um, it also has a pretty big bumper for a racing buggy this also makes it uh, look like a basher again that's fine by me moving on to the rear uh, also a anti-torque bar very nice and uh, the same shocks actually the shocks are identical front to back which is uh, hmm, a bit uh, different from the norm but uh, that's okay uh, they can again be uh, mounted at two spots at the bottom and uh, won't be visible to you but they have six mounting holes at the top again same as the front uh, you get uh, plastic a arms at the bottom and adjustable arms at the top uh, metal dog bones again and um, yeah pretty much identical and these uh, white things at the bottom of the wing i'm not sure what those are supposed to be um huh <laughs> maybe you can uh, mount LEDs in them um, doesn't look like it okay but well a uh, personal touch from the designers I guess okay and uh, actually let me uh, take off the wheels so we can uh, have a look at uh, how they are mounted okay at the rear pretty standard fare as you can see uh, the wheel adapters 18 millimeters uh, standard on these uh, kinds of cars of course so you can use all kinds of uh, buggy wheels 
or short course wheels uh, even if you'd like um, but they are aluminium and you can also see that orange rubber seal thing in the middle of the wheel adapter uh, that actually uh, acts to secure the wheel onto the onto the wheel adapter um, I hadn't seen that before it works pretty well uh, the wheels don't uh, just come off uh, very easily um, it makes mounting the wheels a bit uh, easier actually um, aluminium wheel nuts and they are not knurled or they don't have a profile on them so do make sure to uh, wrench those down good and tight and let's see yeah, plastic uh, riser over here uh, obviously with uh, bearings two bearings uh, in them so uh, that looks uh, pretty normal the riser is pretty big beefy but uh, we'll see how it holds up in my driving videos okay at the front we see a uh, mix of aluminium and uh, plastic the riser again is uh, plastic and yeah I'm uh, glad to see that this uh, what is this the C-Hub I'm not sure even but uh, I'm sure someone can tell me um, aluminium that's nice uh, adjustable links for the steering and uh, those are uh, different these are metal actually not aluminium huh, pretty nice um, the entire setup actually looks pretty beefy uh, moving on to the center of the steering setup we see an aluminium again anodized very nice and pretty thick this uh, Ackerman plate quite thick huh again pretty briefy that's nice and if I spin the car around we see a uh, servo 9 kilogram servo it is metal geared by the way no servo saver is there no servo saver in the car no there doesn't seem to be a servo saver in the car now um, most in most of my cars I don't run servo savers myself uh, but that's also because I put very beefy servos in my cars um, 29 kilo uh, high techs um, yeah so I uh, have no idea how well this servo here will hold up we will see I'll uh, give the car a good bashing and we'll see if the servo survives and if it's fast enough of course but uh, yeah it is waterproof by the way uh, the entire car should be waterproof the ESC is as well actually let's take a helicopter view of the chassis so um, let's see front to back we've got a again a very thick aluminium plate stiffener uh, at the front and uh, nicely anodized as well quite nice it ends uh, at uh, the center gearbox or gearbox uh, diff housing uh, and yes the car does have three diffs Very, uh, is that true yes it does three diffs okay and um, after the diff uh, you see again a aluminium stiffening bar this car really looks beefy very nice and uh, let's see you got a uh, weatherized on off switch over here some cable retainers which actually aren't used at the moment um, maybe you can root your one no it doesn't really look like it um, you can uh, secure the servo wires in them I guess um, pretty weird actually oh wait a minute yes you can run your battery wires through them like so and the other one can go through here quite nice quite nice and uh, at front over here you see a receiver box I'm not completely sure if it's uh, waterproof it's at, at least splash proof and uh, over here we see our brushless motor and the heatsink, the aluminium orange heatsink, uh, doubles as your motor mount. So there's no metal or plastic motor mount over here. Um, 
Let's see, metal gears is the center one also metal. Yeah, feels like it. The mesh on mine is well aligned, but it is pretty tight. Yeah, I'll uh, have to look into that. A little bit too tight. Okay, uh, behind the motor we see our 100 amp ESC. It looks a little like a hobby wing ESC actually. It is not branded as being a hobby wing. But, uh, well, it, uh, it is waterproof. Again, that's nice. Yeah, I can't see any branding on it. But it, uh, yeah, we'll see how it uh, turns out, how well the car runs on this setup. And moving on to the other side of the car. Here is where our lipos will live. And as you can see, it looks a little different from the norm. Ordinarily, you'd see, it, uh, see uh, Velcro straps, right? For your lipos, these are clamshell fasteners. Yeah, um, should work out. We'll see. Um, it does make it a little less flexible in terms of uh, the lipos you could use. Uh, but uh, supplied lipos are of, uh, let's say, standard dimensions for these kinds of cars, so you shouldn't be in too much trouble. Otherwise, I'm sure you can remove these. Let's see. Yeah, you should be able to retrofit uh, normal Velcro straps onto this car, uh, should you need that. And here is a look at the bottom of our car. A pretty standard fare, I'd say, an aluminium bottom plate. Again, nicely anodized, and it looks to be a 3 mm plate. Not bad at all. Um, mounting of the front and back clip looks pretty standard. All screws are hex heads, by the way. Um, consistently and uh, I'm pretty sure most people will uh, like that. Oh, oops, correction, there are a few screws that go into plastic and those are Phillips heads. But again, most screws are uh, hex heads, uh, there are a few Phillips heads. Okay, and in the middle over here you see the the screws that hold on to the motor mount or that uh, cooling block so to speak and this is also where you adjust your mesh. Um, I would have preferred uh, a, uh, a way to adjust the mesh from the top of the car that's uh, mostly more uh, convenient but this is, this is pretty typical for these kinds of uh, buggies. Um, yeah, the, the chassis itself uh, has a uh, top and uh, the sides of those are, of course, made out of plastic. Um, what more can I tell you about this car? Well, not much uh, more. I think uh, it's uh, time to get it out and um, I won't be doing that uh, in this video. The weather is uh, not uh, super duper, but I do hope to uh, show you running videos of this car in the very near future. Be on the lookout for that. Uh, actually, uh, at the time you watch this video, the video might already be out, my driving videos. Uh, so uh, yeah, in that case I'll have an annotation link over here for that. For now, uh, if you have any questions about the car, don't hesitate to ask. Thank you very much for watching and hope to catch you on the next video. Bye bye.